working on my lighting here. <laughs> if you are here, let me know. Either uh, chat. Here, I'll say something on the chat. chat um chat <laughs> if you have my um phone number you could text me but i already put my phone on um airplane mode so i won't see it till after class but um i know lynn is going to be watching which um makes me feel good and uh will also you know in, it will um influence the tone of the class whether I can see you if I'm thinking about you listening to me. Um, hopefully, it will bring some levity. Lot yesterday, if you listened, um, <laughs> Lynn commented very nicely without um, without making without hurting my feelings that uh, maybe the my um, banter or my general tone was a little bit um, not not light <laughs> heavy. <laughs> dour perhaps um, no I wouldn't go that far but uh, yeah it's just nice to know that somebody's out there um, I've always been somebody who is um, reticent with my um, social interaction online um, I remember in even back in high school back in the year 2000 um, when people were first chatting online, I was like, I don't think I could do that. Like, I don't know how to find my genuine voice in that setting. And I was always, um, I was always worried about how it was being interpreted and how it was being judged. Um, so I still, I just still carry those feelings. I, I really um, like to be interacting with people one on one. <laughs> so uh, this is a good challenge for me though and uh, as I themed the podcast this week um, I called it Perfect Porridge in reference to uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears so I'm going to continue on with the um, that metaphor uh, for practice today and uh, I, mean, I was thinking more about the Goldilocks story um, and how finding the perfect porridge is not really the moral of the story, um, but I'm going to take that as a lesson from the story. <laughs> it's important to find your uh, perfect porridge when you're, um, you've broken into some bear's house and uh, you are going to steal their food and break their furniture and uh, sleep in their beds. Um, it's important to find the right porridge, the right chair and the right bed in that situation. But um, there is a correlation between our lives now and the idea of being in a foreign and dangerous environment where you are perhaps trying to find uh, what works for you. What that not too hot, not too cold, not too hard, not too soft. Um, what about the beds? Not too high, not too low. Different versions of the story will give you different um, adjectives. <laughs> the Jan Brett version, which uh, we all know and love thanks to Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. Um, yeah, so in that version, I'm trying to think. I've read so many versions. Um, I believe, well, yeah, even in some versions, the porridge is uh, too bland or too salty. I think they're, or maybe even too sweet. So in that version, I think it's hot and cold porridge, um, hard and soft chairs, and then the beds are either too high, to the foot of the bed's too high, the head of the bed's too high, and then there's like the flat one, which is right. Okay. <laughs> um, nobody has let me know that you're out there. So again, it's just this uh, talking into the void, weird sensation here. Um, 
But yeah. Uh, anyway. So yesterday we did um, a 90 minute class. Uh, I'm going to keep this closer to 75 minutes. Um, yeah, so just the progression of my teaching week, which is only three days, not the entire week, uh, is that I will teach my Monday class at my house. And that is kind of the, um, the putting out the feelers class. Uh, often I have not written anything down. Um, more lately I've been trying to write down a sequence uh, more often, but um, you know, occasionally it doesn't happen before class. And uh, you know, I really base my practice, uh, my teaching, I really base my teaching on my practice. So uh, as I practice along with you guys, I'm noticing how my body is reacting to poses and how um, how I, I teach according to what I'm noticing and what's coming up for me. And then um, often, you know, because I have a lot of experience teaching, a lot of experience practicing, um, you know, they'll kind of be a, um, uh, a natural, what will feel like a very natural transition to the, the next pose. So um, one form, one pose and form to the next pose and form to the next pose and then it just kind of flows, flows on and on beautifully and without incident, right? <laughs> uh, so that, uh, that being said, so Monday morning is typically a 90 minute class, so longer practice and uh, I do some things, not that I feel like there's ever any epic failures or anything, but there's some things that uh, could be paired back for a shorter form practice, which is what I do at Rubber Soul. I do a 75 minute class on Tuesdays and on Wednesdays. And I also feel that the time of day and the time of the week uh, is very influential to the kind of class that uh, transpires. So Monday and Tuesday mornings, um, not so different. Uh, I feel like a morning practice is more uh, conducive to um, starting slowly because likely you haven't been awake for too long. Um, you know, I've been awake for about three hours, but still my body, <laughs> still my body is not ready to uh, move quickly. Um, so anyway, so we start out slower and then we maybe approach postures with more um, more of a um, learning, <laughs> there's more learning maybe that happens on a Tuesday morning and um, then as opposed to a Wednesday evening which um, tends to be more of a um, stress relief practice and uh, so I interpret that for me as like moving more quickly, um, kind of shaking things off a little more than delving uh, delving slow and deep. So um, if you are available for the Wednesday evening class, that might be a little more, a little more flowy. It's about as flowy as I get. So <laughs> uh, often on Wednesday evenings, I skip the inversion to the dismay of Daniela. But um, now you can just do any kind of class, any time of day with these nifty recordings. And it is 10 a.m. So if you are here, thanks for being here. Um, again, this will be about a 75 minute practice. Um, I, can't, um, I can't be held to time restraints uh, exactly, but um, here goes. So uh, we are going to start in a uh, hero pose today. So uh, for practice today, if you have a block or two blocks, please make them available. If you have a strap, make that available. If you don't have a strap, please find something to act as a strap. It could be 
a towel, it could be a necktie, it could be a very um, sturdy shoelace. Um, get something, because we will be using the strap. Um, and then um, a blanket if you have it. Okay, so uh, get yourself situated. Knees together, angle your shins apart. You might take the flesh and muscle of your calves, push it back and apart as you take a seat between your heels. You might take that seat and say, ooh, that's kind of tender on my knees. And at that point, I invite you, uh, encourage you to put some height underneath your hips, even, either in the form of a blanket or a block or a combination of blankets and blocks. Okay. Um, manually move the flesh of your buttocks back and apart to get a better uh, seat with your sits bones on your prop. Palms on the thighs. Shoulder blades back, shoulder blades down the back, chin parallel to the floor, sides of the neck ease back to align your head over your heart and your heart over the center of your pelvis. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nostrils. Exhale, sigh it out audibly. Arrive in the room, on your mat, and in your body for the next 75 minutes of yoga practice. As you arrive, ask yourself how you're feeling this morning physically. Are there any areas of discomfort, soreness, pain that may be calling for attention? If so, let your mind traverse your body answering those signals with breath, with movement of energy through those spaces. Encouraging release and surrender. And then you might take note of a more general energy, a less, um, a less, what would you call that, central, or a less, um, concentrated energy and maybe just a general energy of your body, of your emotions, of your mind this morning. Settle down through your legs and hips. Notice all of those areas where your body is meeting the surfaces beneath you. Extend your energy down into those spaces as though your body is growing roots into the earth, reaching through the floor beneath you, reaching through the foundation of whatever building you may be practicing in, reaching deep into the earth below you. And then from the earth, draw up from your hips, from your sits bones, up through the low back, low abdomen, middle ribs, middle back, chest, upper back, neck, back of the head, crown of the head, to the sky. Soften your skin. You might imagine a glow about you, an aura. Illuminating your body and blurring the edges of your physical being. Again, turn your attention to your breath. Direct breath in and out through the nostrils slowing down and deepening the breath pattern. Begin Ujjayi Pranayama, the triumphant uprising breath, by drawing in a gentle contraction at the back of your throat. Listen for the sound that this breath is producing. 
and let that sound be a tool to draw your attention into the present moment, into your body. The breath acting as this interplay between the internal and the external. External to internal, internal to external. If you notice your mind wandering, leaving the body, leaving the room, worrying, planning, whatever the mind is want to do, invite your mind back to the breath. Let your consciousness ride the waves of the breath and inhale the breath swelling like a wave and exhale, the breath retreating back to the great ocean. Please draw your palms together in front of your heart. Press your palms lightly in. Widen out through your elbows. Broaden across your collarbones. And we will chant OM three times before beginning the moving practice. Exhale your breath and inhale for OM. OM. your heart, release your palms to your thighs, then slowly lift your head as you open your eyes. I think of Mary every time I own in this room. Uh, take your right hand behind your right hip, cross your left hand to your right thigh, inhale to grow tall and exhale to twist. Revolve the chest open towards the right wall. Use the um, the torsion is the, the right word <laughs> of the left hand against the right thigh to pull the left side of the belly, the left ribs, the left shoulder, uh, wrapping around the spine towards the right wall. Right shoulder hugging to the back of the chest. Eventually you might take the neck and the head into the revolution here, chin parallel to the floor and breathe into the shape. Once you have the general um, ex execution, the general expression of the uh, shape, then start to explore the, from the inside out. How does the breath change? How does the pose change with each breath? And let's inhale, come back through center. We'll go to the second side, left hand behind, right hand to the left thigh. Inhale to grow tall, head over heart, heart over the center of your pelvis. 
and then exhale to revolve using the hand against the thigh and you might notice that the right knee is pushing forward draw the right knee back so that the hips stay in alignment squared forward as the chest opens left left shoulder onto the back of the chest and depending on the height that you're seated on, you might need a little bit of height underneath your left hand here. I'm finding that to be the case for myself. Look over your left shoulder, chin parallel to the floor. Maybe experiment with gently drawing the right shoulder away from the right ear to stretch the trapezius muscles on the right side. Soften the edges of your mouth. And again, once you have the general shape, use the breath to grow and change the pose with time. And we're gonna inhale to come forward. Hopefully you have your strap or strap substitute nearby. Take it in your two hands, shoulder width distance apart, extend through your knuckles and then plug your arms into your shoulder sockets. So arms reach forward and then plug in. Now keep the, uh, Keep the strap pulled taut and begin to reach your arms overhead. So extend up through the knuckles, draw the shoulder blades down the back side of the chest. Keeping the strap taut, slowly start to draw your biceps back behind your ears. This might be seen more clearly from the side. Shoulders back without jutting the low ribs forward. Chin stays parallel to the floor. Stay rooted through the sits bones, reaching through the crown of the head, and then slowly begin to separate the hands apart until you can draw the strap down behind your back. So uh, early on in practice, give yourself a lot of space here. You might be bending your elbows a little bit too as you explore the shoulders, bringing the strap overhead and down behind. You might coordinate with your breath, or you might be holding in that extra sticky, extra tight spot. Liberate yourself from strict, um, from strict guidelines. <laughs> For now, the guidelines are not strict. Later on, I'm going to start um, really getting uh, getting strict. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Uh, know that you always have options and uh, you're exploring your own body and that's the only body you have to explore. Um, you can't do yoga in anybody else's body. So I had this, I've been uh, proposing this concept of the Freaky Friday yoga class where you just inhabit another person's body for a yoga practice and uh, how strange and enlightening that experience could be because we're all you know everybody who's ever practiced yoga everybody who's ever innovated yoga only had their one body to be uh to to be in to practice yoga in. so we just don't know what other people's physical experiences are okay let's come to a tabletop position shoulders over the wrist knees below the hips Inhale, belly and chest down, tailbone and gaze lift into your cow pose. Exhale, round the spine, chin to chest, tailbone towards the floor, belly button towards the ceiling, Halloween cat. And continue with your breath. Inhale, might move you into a cow pose. Exhale, you might round the spine into cat. You might be holding in one shape or the other, finding that one pose really is giving you what you need this morning. If it's giving you what you need, take it. Take what you need. <laughs> that was my uh, Mick Jagger impersonation, if you didn't catch that. Okay, so variations on this shape might be hips side to side, might be bending uh, the knees back, extending the arms forward, might be bending the elbows down. You might really be focusing on flowing with your breath. Use the shapes, use this time as an opportunity to check in with your spine. Recognize that your body is a new place to explore today. Okay, I 
enough of that. Now we're gonna do our long, luxurious hand to big toe sequence. So if you were with me yesterday, you are excited because doing it two days in a row feels even better than just doing it one day. So um, I don't know about y'all who practiced with me yesterday, but um, <laughs> I'm feeling a little sore, which is always the best place uh, to be for the next practice. Okay, thighs ground, extend through the heels, take your strap, draw your right knee into your chest, loop the strap around the right foot and extend your right leg straight. So straight uh, is relative here, um, lengthen the back of your right leg to the, uh, to the best of your ability. And then once the leg is straight, start to lift the heel towards that 90 degree angle. Okay, if and when, if or when 90 degrees is achieved, you might begin to extend the leg past that angle. What is likely to happen as the leg goes past 90 degrees, this knee is gonna come up. Try to keep the left thigh grounded. Perhaps the hands walk up the strap. I, I, I always advise the practice of this pose with enough uh, space on the strap so that your head and shoulders can remain rested. So we can really focus on the legs here. Extend up through the back of your right heel, draw back through the right toes. Wind the right outer hip away from the right armpit. And here again, I'll introduce my, uh, my theme, my Goldilocks theme. So, um, uh, find your, uh, your um, edge today. I'm saying your edge, your perfect forage. Find where the pose is suiting for your needs. So some days, uh, some days I want, I'm a, I'm a papa bear porridge kind of, kind of gal. I want that hot forage. I want that pose that is uh, a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> the pose that's a little bit too much. Um, so some days you want your porridge hot, some days you want your porridge cold, some days you want the pose to uh, be, create less sensation. So I'm saying cold, less sensation, hot, more sensation. Um, so find that place where you're, there's enough happening along the back of your right leg or anywhere else in your, uh, in your low body to where the pose is um, interesting to where the pose um, feels like it's creating opening without being um, without being harmful to your well-being this morning. Okay, enough chatter on that side. Uh, let's pass the strap into the right hand or uh, uh, push pass the, the foot into the right hand if that's available. Left hand to the left thigh for grounding as you widen the right leg out to the right. So opening the front of the chest, the front of the ribs, the front of the pelvis up towards the ceiling as we extend through the inseam of the right leg and ground the left thigh. So notice what you're feeling today, where you're feeling. Recognize that your experience of these shapes will change with time, with time. <laughs> Every time you come to the mat, this is gonna feel a little bit differently if you're tuning in to the subtle experience. So if the pose is uh, to mama bear right now and you want to turn up the heat, you might lift the heel higher, bring the outside edge of the leg closer to the floor. You might even try to grab the outside of the foot. Come back to some deep breathing in and out through the nostrils. And right leg back to center, past the foot or the strap into the left hand. Right arm can extend out to the right. Right leg leads over to the left, hips stacking, right shoulder revolving back towards the floor. A 
adjust the pose to suit your needs at this moment. And just notice after these first few uh, poses, what, what's your tendency today? Do you need that hotter practice, that more fiery practice? Or are you going for something calmer, something cooler? If you want to fire it up, right thumb can come to the crease of your right hip and gently push that hip away. Um, I experienced this little adjustment as somebody else doing this adjustment to me. And um, I just kind of realized that so this is an adjustment you can, you can practice on yourself. It's nice to have somebody else do it for you. <laughs> but there is something to be said for um, practicing solo. Uh, push your right hip, push into your right hip, extend through the sole of your right foot. Remember to breathe deeply. Recognize the expression, the hardness that's coming into the face, into unnecessary uh, areas of the, the physical form, and then let go in those areas. Soften the belly. Okay, right leg back to center, re-square the hips, and we're going to place the block, the strap off to one side, wrap the hands behind the right leg, and then slide the fingertips up towards the right heel as we curl the upper body away from the mat. Chin to chest, forehead towards or to the knee, belly button in towards the spine, slide the fingertips up towards the heel, extend through the left leg, try to ground the heel, ground the left calf, ground the left thigh, soften the edges of the mouth for five, four, three, two, and one. Let the head down, bring the left knee to the floor, Draw your right knee in and up towards your right armpit. Now take hold of the right foot inside and outside with both hands. Angle the sole of the foot to the ceiling, shin perpendicular to the mat, as we come into a half happy baby pose. Push the foot into the hands, pull the knee down towards the floor. Kick and pull. Push with the foot, pull with the hands. Feel what you're feeling in the right hip. and. If it's too mama bear, then extend the left leg straight, heat up the pose a little bit, left heel to the floor, left calf to the floor, and where are you feeling the pose now? Likely the, uh, the sensation of the pose has changed somewhat if you've extended the left leg. Breathe into the shape. Ride the waves of your conscious. Let your consciousness ride the waves of your breath as they wash over the pose. to move into an outer hip stretch, much like pigeon pose. So left foot's going to come to the floor, flex or flex the right foot and cross the right ankle over the left thigh. We'll start with threading the needle, bring the left knee in towards the chest, interlace your fingers behind your left thigh or in front of your left shin. Use your right elbow if you'd like to wind the right knee away as you bring the shin closer to the chest. You will notice that the positioning of the right leg is somewhat like a pigeon pose at, uh, turned on its back. So um, if this is your porridge, you're, you're just eating this up and just loving it, you're gonna eat the whole bowl right here. Or if you wanna heat things up, from here you might uh, hook the right foot into the left elbow, hook the right knee into the right elbow, interlace the fingers, cradle the right shin, and extend the left leg straight. At this point, the head and shoulders might come up, curl up off the floor as you reach through your left foot, widen your right knee away, pull your uh, right ankle closer to the left shoulder, try to soften the edges of your mouth, and if you're still feeling like your porridge is a little cold, okay, 
Uh, hook your left elbow underneath your right ankle, right arm over the, uh, over the head, and then bend the elbow, grab the fingertips, release the head back into the right arm. So you're getting a hip stretch and a shoulder stretch all at once. Breathe, soften the edges of your mouth. And if it's up, left foot back to the floor, right leg back to the earth, extend your right leg, and notice how differently your two sides feel. Um, your right leg's probably considerably longer than your left leg right now, so we have to uh, we gotta fix that. Right leg grounds, left knee into the chest, loop the strap around the left foot, extend your left leg straight, Push out through the heel, then slowly begin to lift the heel to a 90 degree angle or towards that angle. If you're there, start to draw the leg closer in towards the chest, possibly walking the hands higher up the strap towards the foot. Ground the right thigh. So if you are to that place, I was talking about this yesterday, if you are to that place where um, you might, it's not inconceivable, to grab the uh, left foot so that uh, the name of this pose, the sequence is, um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hand to big toe pose. I was going to give it to you in Sanskrit, but um, Supta Padangustasana, that's the, uh, the Sanskrit hand to big toe pose. So um, with that in mind, uh, two fingers around the uh, big toe of the left foot. I prefer, find it uh, more, uh, more interesting to me if the one hand is out the outside of the foot, the other hand is at the inside of the foot. So if you are uh, to that place where you want to grab the foot, you can experiment with a couple of different ways of doing that. Talk to the back of that left leg. Say what's up, where's up, how's up. And from here, we're going to pass the strap or the foot into the left hand. Right hand can ground the right thigh as you widen the left leg out to the left. So notice the tendency, maybe the tendency is for your whole body to roll off to the left. Try to keep the right hip, right shoulder, right ribs back towards the floor as you extend through the inseam of the left thigh. So uh, starting at the inner groin. Notice what you're feeling along the inside of the left leg. Is it too much? Too hot? Too cold? Just right? You got to eat it up. You got to eat up the pose. So do you need more from it to, to make it your perfect porridge? If so, lift your heel higher. Maybe the outside of the foot comes deeper towards the floor. Actively extending through the leg all the while. Okay, lift the left leg back to center, pass the strap of the foot to the right hand, left arm out to the left. Start to stack the left hip on top of the right hip. So the right, the left shoulder wants to come up, doesn't it? So you might use this little uh, trick to push the right elbow down, lift the right shoulder up, and then ground more fully through the back of the left shoulder before releasing the chest once again. Okay, where are you feeling? What are you feeling? How are you feeling? Too hot, too cold? Find your perfect uh, balance. I hesitate to use the word perfect. It's, um, it's, it's a difficult concept. <laughs> I love what Cal used to say. Used to say um, I don't know. I guess I don't know what you say. This could be the pose. Um, this could be the pose. This is, could be the pose where um, you're happy. Your life is balanced and you're happy and everything's perfect. And 
you're just eating the best porridge you've ever had right now. Um, don't we all love porridge? I hear it's just cereal. I hear it's just oatmeal, which I do love. Okay, left thumb to the hip crease if you wanna. Left leg to center, take the strap off to the side, re-square the hips, wrap the arms behind the back of the left leg, peel your head, neck, and shoulders away from the floor, reach your fingertips up towards your heel, chin to chest, forehead towards or to the knee, belly button in towards the spine, extend through the right leg, ground the right heel, ground the right calf, five, soften the edges of the mouth, four, three, two, one, let it go, right foot to the floor, left knee in and up towards your armpit, grab the inside of the foot, outside of the foot, interlace your fingers, kick your foot into your hands, and pull your left knee down towards the floor. Kick and pull, kick and pull. Notice what you're feeling. I dare say, is it too hot, is it too cold? Back up if it's too hot, go for more. Heat it up if it's too cold. Right leg extends, heel, calf, thigh down. Kick and pull. Look, I don't know if my uh, commentary on my preference of pose uh, is a, to a detriment of your feelings about the, the, the poses, but I just love, I just love some half happy baby. Just. It's very, um, it does a lot for me that full happy baby uh, does not access. Think about wrapping your right inner thigh towards the floor. And again, push, pull, push, pull with the hands, with the foot. Okay, right foot to the floor, flex the left foot, cross the left ankle over the right thigh, draw the right knee into the chest, interlace the fingers behind the thigh, in front of the shin, push the elbow into the thigh, widen the knee away as you bring the ankle in closer, the shin parallel to the chest, imagine pigeon pose turned on its back, and then option to get hotter, right uh, foot, left foot in the right elbow, left knee in the right elbow, interlace the fingers, cradle the shin, extend the right leg straight, head and shoulders pop up off the floor, try to soften the neck, reach through the right foot, descend the right leg towards or to the floor, keep the left foot flexed, ankle straight, widening through the knee, pulling back through the ankle, Choose to stay here or hook the right elbow underneath the right ankle, or left ankle, sorry. Take the left arm by the left ear, bend the elbow, interlace your fingers, release the head back into the left arm. Supporting the head, opening the shoulder, opening the hip. Remember to breathe. Reach through the right foot, ground through the heel, ground through the back of the leg. Seek ground. Let's give this a five, four, three, two, and one. Let it go, OMG. Extend your legs out straight. What if you just did that every day? Wow. Okay, how long am I gonna lie here? Let's give it a five, four, three, two and one roll to one side press your way up and back into downward facing dog press your hands down forward shift your hips up and back get acquainted with your dog give it a little walk how do the backs of your legs feel hopefully g-o-o-d good okay bend one knee reach the opposite heel towards or to the floor shifting the hips side to side quickly or slowly Press your hands down forward, shift your hips up and back, keeping any amount of bend in your knees. 
And then inhale to flow forward to plank. Shoulders over wrists, shoulders, hips, and heels in a line. If they're not, bring your knees to the floor to keep your knees, hips, and shoulders in a line. Otherwise, keep those legs toning, sides to the waistline, back, tailbone lengthening towards the heels, shoulders away from the ears, heart gently melting down. And then bend the knees to the floor. Everyone, tilt your tailbone towards the ceiling. Chin reaches forward, elbows bend back, knees, chest, chin, slide forward onto your belly. Press the tops of your feet down, lengthen your tailbone back, shoulder blades on the back. Curl up, cobra pose, elbows down, shoulder blades down, collarbones broad, side to neck back, crown of the head lifts, cobra pose. With an exhale, lower down, tuck the, the toes, send the heels back. Breathe, extended child's pose, and then hips up and back, downward facing dog. Let's flow like that three more times for the three bears. Inhale forward, exhale, lower down, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, curl up, cobra. Exhale, lower down, press back, downward facing dog. Inhale, down dog. Exhale, release. Inhale forward, exhale, lower down, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, curl up, cobra pose. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, right leg lifts, straight up and back, lift to the top of your mat. Exhale, lunge your right foot forward between your hands. Create that long stride. Heel below the knee, hands on fingertips, fists or ball or blocks on either side of your front foot. Lift through the back inner thigh, shoulders away from the ears, collarbones broad. Be in your lunge. Notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling. Feel your strength. Feel your awesomeness. Feel your hmm. <laughs> I was gonna say butt. Feel your butt. Okay, left knee to the floor. Since your legs together, hands to the front thigh, push your elbows straight, sides of the waistline back, tailbone lengthens down, shoulder blades down the back, collarbones broad. Keep scissoring the legs in, and then any amount start to melt the hips down and forward. Either choose to stay here, arms to your sides, shoulder blades back. Sweep the arms overhead as you inhale, look up, reach up. Maybe start to draw the biceps back behind the ears. Curl in the upper back as you melt the hips down and forward, wrapping the left outer hip towards the top of your mat. And then chest forward, arms forward, hands frame the front foot, tuck the back toes, send the right leg back downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Lift the top of your mat, exhale, lunge your left foot forward between your hands, fingertips, ball, fist, or blocks on either side of your front foot. Long stride, knee over the heel, lift through the back inner thigh, reach through the back heel, shoulders away from the ears, collarbones broad, scissor the legs together, and then extend from the hips, forward through the front knee, back through the back heel, and again. I think the word was not butt that I was looking for, but feel your, um, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say autonomy, uh, yeah, well, there's a degree of like, feel your own, feel your own experience of this, of this pose. Feel empowered by the uh, idea that you get to, you get to practice this po pose in your body and no one else gets that. You own this, you own this body. Own it, right knee to the floor, uh, scissor the legs, hands to the front thigh. Press your elbows straight. I think I'm getting a little too much levity out of this practice. Side of the waistline back, tailbone down, lift the chest, and then slowly melt the hips down and forward, wrapping the right outer hip towards the top of the mat. Choose to stay here or arms at your sides. Roll your shoulders back, palms face forward. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Take the gaze up beyond the thumbs. Take the arms back. Look back, curl back, keep wrapping the right outer hip forward. Scissor the legs together, melt the hips down, soften the edges of the mouth, lift the heart. Look back, curl back, and then chest forward, arms forward, hands frame the front foot. Send the left leg back, downward facing dog. 
Inhale to plank. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. Inhale, curl, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Inhale, down dog. Exhale, completely. Inhale, right leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat. Exhale, lunge your right foot forward. Uh, left knee down. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, hands right in the front foot. Step forward, forward fold. Inhale, palms to shin, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale and fold in, head releases. Inhale, circle up, reach up, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, palms touch. Exhale, fold forward, release your head. Inhale, palms to shins, halfway lift, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale, fold in, right leg back, knee to the floor. Inhale, sweep the arms out, up and overhead. Exhale, hands frame the front foot, send the left leg back, plank position. Inhale and plank. Exhale, lower down, shutter under, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, curl upward, facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, and exhale. Two more breaths, inhale, exhale. Last, biggest breath in. Exhale, let it out. Inhale, left leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat, exhale, lunge the left foot forward, right knee down. Inhale, rise up, palms touch. Exhale, hands bring the front foot, step forward, fold forward. Inhale, palms to shin, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, rise up, arms overhead, palms touch at the top. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold, left leg back, knee to the floor. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, hands frame the front foot, right leg back, plank position. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, curl up. Exhale, press back, downward facing dog. Three breaths, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last biggest breath in. Exhale, let it out. Inhale, right leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat. Exhale, lunge your right foot between your hands. Melt your left knee to the floor, possibly onto some padding. Likely, likely you do want padding here. Okay, what we're going to do is look over the left shoulder. Bend the left, point the left knee, bend the left, point the left toes, bend the left knee, reach for the inside of the foot. Crampable situation here for me, possibly for you. How can you alleviate that cramping? Maybe some of this, maybe some of this wiggle, wiggle action before you attempt it again. Okay, so hand, this hand, right hand might be the inside of the foot or the, the uh, forearm might be on the thigh as you pull the heel towards the outer hip. If you can't reach the foot, uh, do that, use that strap to uh, reach the foot. Heel towards the outer hip. Mama Bear, back it off. Papa Bear, shift the hips down and forward. Find your porridge, eat it up. Breathe the pose. Okay, release the right, the left foot. Look over the right shoulder. Just do this a little bit. And then uh, bend the left toes, point the left toes, bend the left knee, reach for the outside of the foot, pull the heel towards the outer hip. Start to shift the ch chest open towards the right wall, possibly bringing your left forearm down towards the floor. If that feels like the appropriate expression of your shape today. So as I was mentioning before I started the, uh, the class today, I was saying how um, 
I really base the practice on, I, I base my instruction a lot on my home practice, uh, what feels, what I'm compelled to do for my body. And I'm thinking about uh, the sequence, and this is kind of like um, stretching out after a long hula hoop session, which is what I've been doing a lot lately is hula hooping. And um, I think it's real, uh, there's a lot of uh, quad, quad work, quad strength that goes into hula hooping. And, so I'm feeling a little tight in these regions, um, thus making you guys do a bunch of quad stretches. Okay, uh, release your foot, hands to the inside of the right leg, and now we're gonna do our Ekapada Kundanyasana 2, I believe. I'm not gonna translate that because I don't know what it means. But it is an arm balance, and it is a whole lot of fun. Okay, so, um, you don't need to move. I'm just moving so you can see the pose better. Um, I'm going to bring both hands to the inside of my right leg. And again, there will be um, cold porridge and hot porridge available. <laughs> so choose your porridge. <laughs> okay, walk your right foot forward. Uh, lower down. So this might be one interpretation of the pose, just bringing the hands forward or bringing the forearms down to the inside of the right leg and then work towards hugging the leg into the arm. So this uh, adduction of the right uh, leg. And then I'm gonna bring the right shoulder behind my right calf, snuggle in. You can use your thumb to move your um, leg warmer or your calf <laughs> over your shoulder. And then I'm gonna uh, bring my hands to either side of my right foot, shift my weight forward as I lift my right leg up. So that might be the next step. And then lift my back knee, and I'm going to use my left elbow as a shelf, so I'm going to bend my left elbow back as my chest goes forward, and then I lift up, everything up. Well, my hands are still on the floor, so that's not everything, but um, whew, I thought I'd be better at this <laughs> Full disclosure, I thought I'd be better at this day, <laughs> but still hard, turns out. Okay, uh, so again, elbow towards. <laughs> so if you ate a big breakfast, you'll be feeling your elbow push right into your uh, big bowl of porridge right here. Okay, uh, one more time. <laughs> Different angle. Oh, okay, so after you've done that three times, we're gonna come <laughs> to a runner stretch. Uh, knee over the. <laughs> Hip over the knee, right leg extended forward, pull back through the hip, pull back through the right toes, extend the chest over the right leg, you might have blocks on either side of that leg, as you start to drape the length of the spine over the right leg, tucking the chin to the chest, forehead towards or to the leg. Reconnect with your breath. Walk your hands back up, right foot to the floor, tuck the back toes, send the right leg back, downward facing dog. And we got a second side, inhale, left leg lifts. Lift to the top of your mat, exhale, lunge your left foot between your hands. Okay, set up with that long stride. As you bend the right knee to the floor, you might find some padding for your back foot. And first, Crampable situation here. Look over your right shoulder, bend the right knee, reach for the inside of the foot, pull the heel towards the hip, use an arm extender in the form of a strap. Hand can be at the inside of the uh, left foot or a forearm to the thigh, melt the hips down and forward, revolve the chest forward. Find your pose. So much to discover here. Sometimes there's so much to discover for me in these quad stretches. I'm like, I just need to go a whole second round of doing all of that again because 
I'm sure there was more. There was more to that than I could scratch with that first, uh, first go round. Okay, release the right leg back, right hand to the inside of the left foot, look over the left shoulder, point the right toes, bend the uh, left, right knee, reach back with the left hand, pull the heel towards the hip, uh, cool it down, shift the hips back, heat it up, shift the hips down and forward, kick the foot into the hand, Pull the heel towards the hip, revolve the chest towards the left wall. Possibly keep the right hand on the floor or maybe bring it down. Get what you need. Release that foot, walk both hands to the inside of the left leg, walking the left foot a couple of inches to the left, and then snuggle that left shoulder behind the left calf using the left thumb to push the flesh and muscle of the calf onto the shoulder, and then hug the left shoulder into the body. So use those adductors to draw in, and then shift the weight forward, lift the left toes up off the floor. You might be able to see this, uh, this little trick better. So I'm gonna bend my right elbow and rest my hip on my elbow. Not the traditional uh, <laughs> expression of the pose. Uh, if you are there and you want, it, if you, want it, you want more of that heat, want more of that challenge, you would try to uh, straighten the right arm. Okay. Three times, we gotta try it three times. One for each bear. Okay, Ugh. make those noises so I don't feel alone here. <sighs> okay, a lot of rally, rally people, one more time. So we all did that three times. Uh, right knee, right hip over the right knee. Reach the left leg forward, pull the left toes back. Hands on the blocks or hands on the floor, round your spine over your left leg. Doesn't this feel good? Option to label this as feeling good. Option to enjoy. Okay, let's check the time. What do we got? Hmm. Okay, left foot down, plant the hands, left leg back, downward facing dog, press the hands down and forward, shift the hips up and back. Start to walk your hands back towards your feet in a forward fold at the back of your mat. Exhale, Inhale, palms to shin, shoulder blades on the back, chin and chest forward. Exhale, fold deeply in. Inhale, sweep your arms out, up and overhead. Push the feet into the floor, palms touch at the top. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides. Tadasana. Okay, turn 90 degrees on your mat for goddess pose. Take your heels apart. Angle your toes at about a 45 degree angle, hands on your hips. Bend your knees in the direction of your toes until your hips are at the level of your knees. Knees directly over your heels, weight in the heels, extension through the inner thighs, contracting through, contraction through the outer hips, upper body back. Sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, right arm underneath your left. Palms come together or grab shoulders. Elbows lift, forearms away from the face. Weight in the heels, soften the face, five, Four, three, two, one. Sweep the arms overhead. Stay in your stay in your squat. Okay. What was that? Left arm underneath your right. Elbows lift. Forearms away from the face. Or grab the shoulders. Upper body back. 
head over heart, heart over the center of the pelvis, extension through the inner thighs, contraction through the outer hips, weight in the heels for five, four, three, two, one, straighten the legs, sweep the arms up, exhale, arms down, heel toe the feet in. Have you ordered your hula hoop yet? Get on it. Okay, hula hoop, one direction. <sighs> Other direction. And we are having fun. <laughs> Option to have fun. Okay. Throw your hula hoop loudly off to the side. Take your feet wide apart. Line up your heels with the back edge of your mat. Turn your toes slightly in. Pull those stockings up your legs. You might even be able to see this here with my bare naked legs. Pull your le kneecaps up. So you're pulling stockings up your legs. Lengthen down through your tailbone. Roll your shoulders back. I felt that was too provocative. I'm not going to say that anymore. Shoulders back. Throw on your superhero cape. Look up, lengthen along your torso. Exhale, hinge at your hips. Place your wrists below your shoulders. We're going to twist first. Left hand below the face, right hand to your imaginary glass of water. Don't spill the water as you revolve your left ribs towards the right wall. Once your shoulders are stacked, right arm reaches towards the ceiling. Okay, if you'd like, turn your palm the other way. Wrap your right shoulder, right, wrap your right hand behind your back. Can you grab your left thigh with your right hand? If you can, do it. If you can't, don't do it. Right shoulder on the back, left ribs revolve towards the right wall, push the thigh bones back, extend the crown of the head forward, revolve around that central channel, and then look down, hand down, left hand to the glass of water. Revolve towards the left. Thigh bones back, crown of the head forward, left shoulder blade hugs to the back of the chest, shoulders stacked, left arm up, Turn the palm, reach for the top of the right thigh, hug the left shoulder blade deeply onto the back of the chest. Tone the muscles of the legs, press the thigh bones back, lengthen back through the tailbone, extend through the crown of the head, revolve around that central channel, ringing out the spine, and then gaze down, hand down. Begin to lower the crown of your head towards the floor, walking your hands back in space. Hands are shoulder width distance apart, apart and the elbows over the wrists. Forehead, crown of the head towards or to the floor. If you have locks, a blanket, or a blanket handy, you might find something to ground your head onto to get that sense of pushing down through the crown of your head, lengthening the entire back side of your body. Ground through the outer edges of your feet, lift into your kneecaps, push your thigh bones back, lift your shoulders up away from your ears. Option two, headstand here. Shift weight onto your head, into your hands, elevate your legs slowly. Squeeze them together, lengthen up through the tailbone, push back through the thigh bones, ground through the crown of the head, lift the shoulders up away from the ears. Tripod headstand, if that's in your practice. If not, you might just experiment getting your head closer to the floor. Okay. Come on out of there. Wrists back below the shoulders, shoulders away from the ears, hands to the hips, elbows to the ceiling, draw back through the sides of the waistline. Heel toe your feet back together. Okay, imaginary hula hoop or real hula hoop. One direction. You can't have your hands there if you have a real hula hoop. And in the other direction. Okay, what's next? I'm consulting my notes for the first time here. Hula, oh, um, malasana, okay. So, this may require some height underneath your hips. We're going to come to yoga squat. So, uh, angle your toes out just as you did for goddess pose with your feet a little closer together. Hands in front of your heart, shoulder blades on the back, widen out through your elbows, and begin to bend your knees in the direction of your toes, sinking your hips down. If that's not an okay approach for your knees, then find another approach, possibly from the ground. So, I want you to train your heels down. If you're up on your toes, then your heels are not weight bearing, so they're not learning how to move downward here. So slide a blanket underneath your heels uh, if they're not down. You can figure out what it looks like to slide a blanket underneath your heels. Okay, 
I, I believe in you. Widen your arms into your legs, hug your legs into your arms. As your arms widen out, your collarbones will broaden, your heart will come forward and lift up. As you hug your knees into your arms, your tailbone will lengthen down. Be in your squatted position. Recognize where you're feeling, what you're feeling. Release your hips to the floor, and we are going to do another arm balance. So have your blocks handy. This is called Ekka Hasta Bhujasana, and we're going to transition from Ekka Hasta Bhujasana to Ashta Vakrasana. Um, okay, I'm not going to translate those, because again, don't know. <laughs> Don't know what they mean really, but just know what they look like. Okay, uh, <laughs> so much. I, I help you to have so much faith in me, don't I? By all my uh, admissions of not knowing Sanskrit. Okay, uh, standing uh, Dandasana, shoulders over hips, sides of the neck back, crown of head lifts. Have your blocks on either side of your thighs. Okay. Draw your right knee back, grab your right foot with both hands, push it forward, pull it back. So you'll notice this shape, very similar to half happy baby. Push it forward, pull it back a couple of times. Then we're going to cradle the foot, drawing the knee forward, pulling the ankle back. Similar to our uh, reclined pigeon pose. This time you can make some circles with the hip, one direction, the other direction. We are so ready for this today. Man, I'm so proud of us. We did such a good job so far. And now we're getting our, now we're getting our just porridge. Um, we're just desserts, as you might call it. But I just, porridge is my, the only food I eat now. Um, okay, so right shin parallels the floor. Lift uh, your right sh shin up. Tuck your shoulder underneath your leg, using your calf, uh, using your thumb to bring your calf muscle high up over your shoulder. So all those instructions will be familiar from Ekapada Bhujasana too. Pull your heel down towards your hip, hug your leg onto your arm using those adductor muscles. Hands to blocks or to the floor. I'm gonna use blocks, I'll tell you why, because it's easier. Uh, shift your upper body forward, draw the sides of your waistline back to make your left leg ramrod straight. So imagine you have inserted a piece of steel in your leg, so your left leg is now uh, a steel rod. Draw the sides of your waistline forward to shift your body weight into your hands and then draw back through the sides of the waistline as you push up. Okay, that's step one. <laughs> that was step one, people. <sighs> okay. Let's do it again. Okay, that was step one. We're going to bring step two into the mix. Draw back, lift up, snuggle, Hands to blocks or to the floor if you're feeling like you don't need the support of blocks or that you just don't even have blocks. Um, okay, so this is the second one, Ashtavrakrasana, something about eight points. Um, so this leg, I'm going to come up and hook the ankles. And then I'm going to hug my knees together using those adduction muscles. Side to the waistline back, shift my body weight forward, push down into my blocks. Legs forward, hips back. This is Ashtabha five, four, three, two, one. <sighs> Great job. Good job, everyone. I'm proud of you. I love you. Thanks for doing this with me. Um, I know you're out there. I'm looking, looking into the distance where I'm imagining Lynn at her house. Although I'm looking in the wrong direction. She lives that way. Okay, right leg grounds, left knee into the chest, interlace your fingers, kick, pull, kick, pull, okay, cradle, elbows, circles, one direction, the other direction. Okay. Get ready, lift the shin, snuggle the shoulder, use the thumb to move the flesh and muscle of the calf, hug the heel down, squeeze the leg onto the arm, shift the chest forward, draw the waistline back, 
Stick a steel rod in your right leg, just temporarily. Waistline back, push down through the hands, lift through the side of the waistline, hug the arm onto the shoulder, five, four, three, two, one, or stay there for five minutes if that's in your practice. Okay, Ashtabhakrasana, same stuff. Get that shoulder underneath that leg, clamp it down, hug it in, hands on the blocks, chest forward, this time take the take this uh, steel beam out of your right leg, hook the ankles, hug the knees into the shoulder, roll up, upper body weight forward, waistline back, push down, draw back through the sides of the waistline, squeeze the legs, straighten the legs, chest forward, five, four, three, two, one, hips down. <sighs> Aren't we glad we turned on our yoga class today? Okay, heels in, uh, wrists below your shoulders. We're gonna come to a reverse table. Look down the center line of your pot body, push your feet down, lift your hips up, knees over the ankles, wrists under the shoulders, push the hips up, lift the chest up, then look along the ceiling towards the back wall, release your head back. Ah, counter pose, opening up the front of the body. And then chin to chest, hips down. Either that again or um, east facing pose. Um, legs straight. Channel your inner flash dance. I don't know the. Tell me the woman's name. I challenge you to tell me her name. Although I could just look on IMDb. But I want you to tell me. <laughs> Shoulders back. Lift your chest, straighten your legs, push your hips up, lengthen through the tailbone, and then start to take the gaze back, head back, throat open. Push the feet down, lift the hips up, lengthen the tailbone, open up the front of the body, and then slowly lower the hips down. Bring the heels in, hips towards the heels, feet parallel and hip width distance, look up, reach up. And then slowly articulate your back body towards the floor. Tuck your chin to your chest. Tuck your tailbone, belly button in towards your spine. Lower down slowly and with as much control as you can muster. Arms at your sides, heels in towards your hips. Feet parallel, push your hips down. Push your feet down, lift your hips up, interlace your fingers behind your back. Tuck your shoulder blades one at a time underneath your chest. Feel your upper back lift, kick your feet, lift your heart towards your chin, lengthen the back of your neck, and look down the front line of your body. Okay, do you feel that one side of your pose is shorter or tighter? If so, can you move from within to find more balance in your shape? Can you fill up the lung on that lower, tighter side? Release the hips, untuck the shoulders, walk the feet out, let the knees fall together, hand to the belly, hand to the heart. Soft or closed eyes, reconnect with your breathing. One more back bend, a back bend of your choice, go wild. Do you need a restorative mama bear? Do you need a um, drop back papa bear? <laughs> papa bear always is, always be dropping back that papa bear. Okay, um, so do your back bend. It might just be, not just, it may be the perfect pose and it may be bridge pose. It could be a, a bound bridge, blah, 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 wheel, whatever you wanna do, or just lie here. Not just, <laughs> not just. Okay, I'm doing this thing. Do your thing. Do some breathing while you do your thing. Five 
five more breaths, doing your thing. Okay, chin to chest, when you've done your five breaths, come back down, hips to the floor, knees fall together, feet wide apart, hand to the belly, hand to your heart, eyes open or closed, you do you. to a T, exhale, release the knees right, inhale, center, exhale, knees left, windshield wiper your legs with the pace of your breath, releasing the low back and slowing down. Okay, draw your knees into your chest, knees up towards the armpits, grab hold the outside edges of your feet, full happy baby, full on happy baby, rock from side to side. If you've ever seen a baby do this, it's much cuter than seeing me do it. <laughs> oh man, this, uh, this format makes me a little more self-conscious than I generally am teaching yoga especially when I'm doing stuff like this. Okay, feet together. Interlace your fingers around the outside edges of your feet, widen your knees apart, flatten your low back against the floor. Let the pressure of your feet into your hands, lift the heads of your arm bones away from the floor. Extend through your inner thighs, contract through your outer hips. Release the weight of your head. Soften the edges of your mouth. Back to the breath. And let's give, a, give yourself a big hug. Knees together, wrap your arms around the fronts of your legs, grab wrists, forearms, elbows, whatever it is. Hug it, hold it, tuck your chin to your chest, forehead towards your to your knees, squeeze the legs together, tuck your tailbone towards your heels, belly button in towards your spine. Get small, get dense, pull it in, pull it in, get smaller, get denser. And then expand, release, extend your legs. Actually, before you really get into your shape, you might uh, recollect any clothing that you've shed and put it back on. So we're uh, cooling down here. We're gonna find our perfect uh, bare bed, not too soft, not too high at the feet not too hard, not too high at the head, just right, you know? So uh, prop yourself in a way that you feel supported. You feel comfortable, dare I say comfortable. And this might take a little time. Um, a reclined goddess might feel good if you have a bolster to put behind your hips. When you're ready, lie back, send out through your legs, tuck your tailbone, release the weight of your feet out to either side of the room, gently tuck your shoulders one at a time, arms at your sides, palms face up, fingers unfurled, lengthen the back of your neck by tilting your chin towards your chest and placing your head down either on the mat or possibly some padding in the form of a pillow or a blanket. Take these first few moments to reconnect with your breathing. Mm -hmm. 
with a few conscious breaths, let um, prana travel throughout your body. Identifying any areas still holding tension, still um, wanting the work or the stress of the physical practice. Send a message throughout the body that now we are entering a time for stillness, a time for calm, peaceful energy. You might once again feel the connection between your body and the earth throughout your back body. Feel an extension of energy down from your back body through the floor, through the foundation of whatever building you might be in if you are in fact indoors until your energy reaches the earth. And as though the energy that are reaching down like roots deep into the earth, deep into some nutrient-rich soil, draw from the earth. that the mind has left the body, has left the room, has left the moment. Invite it back. this time, this space that you have to just be.
just begin to bring activity back into the extremities of the physical being. Starting by wiggling your ears and um, the tip of your nose, fingers and toes. And then start to reawaken the arms and legs. Perhaps rock the back of your head from side to side. Eventually bend your knees, extend your right arm along your right ear and roll on to your right side. Let your chest melt towards the floor. Transitioning from our corpse pose back into this fetal position, transitioning. Push up to a seated position. Keep your eyes closed. And we will chant Om one single time to close the practice. Palms together in front of the heart. Collarbones broad. Exhale your breath. And inhale for Om. Thank you for joining me today in practice, in um, community. Uh, the light in me honors the light in each of you. Namaste. And I saw on Facebook today that uh, Jason, our beloved yin master, has uh, started a stream as well. So um, I don't know how to make that available to you, but uh, search for it. Maybe we can link up so that um, we can all find each other. But thank you, Jason, for that. That's really cool. And I'm sure a lot of people are very happy to know that you're going to be doing that. Um, okay. Let me know uh, if you were, you know, if you're tuning in, um, suggestions, um, comments, um, gentle criticism, <laughs> gentle criticism, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so again tomorrow, and um, Oh, I didn't record this class, and this was a good one, I thought. Hmm, well, hopefully somebody who's here watching me, because uh, you can enjoy this class, well, I'll try to record tomorrow. Okay, uh, if you want to message me here, do that, uh, if you have my number, if, we, if we're friends like that, text me, or even call me. Um, love you live listeners, and uh, yeah. See you next week, tomorrow, sometime in the future.